In this video, we'll introduce hypothesis testing. Uh, we'll talk about the idea and then do an example while explaining the procedure. So here's the idea. So we have this magician named Mark, and he says, I have a fair coin here. And then in the audience, there's a skeptical statistician named Stacy, and she says, I don't believe you. Can we examine it? So, and then he says, of course. So Stacy takes the coin, flips it 100 times, and says, I'm going to see how many heads I get. So she actually turns out to get 99 heads out of 100, and which is ridiculous, right? So Magician Mark says, wait, I was just unlucky. I swear I'm not lying. So let's give Mark the benefit of the doubt. We'll say, what's the prob we'll compute the probability that we observed an outcome at least as extreme as this, given that Mark isn't lying. So uh, if Mark isn't lying, then the coin is fair, right? So the number of heads we observe should follow this binomial distribution with 100 trials and a uh, 50% chance of heads, because it's fair. So the probability that we observe at least 99 heads, right? We're going to look for at least six extreme. So not just 99, but also 100 heads. Um, you just sum the binomial PMF, and you get uh, this, this number here, which has like 28 leading zeros before a 7, 9, 6. And that's basically 0. So this is strong statistical evidence that the coin is not fair. Our assumption that the, was that the coin is fair. But if this were the case, then observing such an extreme outcome would be absurdly unlikely. So our assumption is probably wrong. And so this is like a probabilistic proof by contradiction. So the procedure, the formal procedure is as follows. We make a claim. So like all airplane food is good or pineapples belong on pizza. So ours will be that super SAT prep uh, claims that their program helps students perform better on the SAT. And uh, let's, we know that the average SAT score is 1059 out of 1600 with standard deviation 210. So we'll set up a null hypothesis and an alternative hypothesis next. Um, and what does that mean? So let mu be the true mean of SAT scores of students of S, uh, super SAT prep. Then our null hypothesis H0 will be that mu is equal to 1059 because it's our baseline or no effect or benefit of the doubt. So we're going to assume that the true mean of the scores is the same as the nationwide mean of 1059. And our alternative is what we want to show, um, which is that, it, uh, that super SAT prep is good and that test takers are better off for it. So we're going to assert that mu is greater than 1059. And this is called the one-sided hypothesis. The other one-sided hypothesis is that mu is less than 1059. And that's if we wanted to argue that uh, super SAT prep makes students worse off. A two-sided hypothesis would be that mu is not equal to 1059 because it's two sides, less than or greater than. And, and that's if we wanted to argue that super SAT prep makes some difference, either for better or worse. So now we'll choose a significance level, alpha. And it's usually 0.05 or 0.01. Uh, let's choose 0.05 and explain this later. Uh, next thing we do is collect data. So we're going to observe 100 students from a super SAT prep, uh, x1 through a, x100. And it turns out the sample mean of the scores is x bar, which is uh, 1,113. Now we compute a p-value, which is the probability of observing data at least as extreme as ours, given that h0 is true. So uh, again, uh, since h0 is true, we're going to assume that the mean is 1059. Uh, so by the central limit theorem, since n is 100 is large enough, the distribution of the sample mean of 100 samples is approximately normal with mean 1059 and variance 210 squared over 100. So the variance of a single test taker was 210 squared. And so you know the variance of a sample mean is sigma squared over n. And we showed this along many times. So the p-value is then the probability that um, if we took an arbitrary sample mean, that it would be at least as extreme as the one we computed, which is 1,113. Um, so we can just standardize, look up a feed table like always, and we'll let you work on that because you know how to do this procedure. And we end up getting 0.0162. So our p-value is 0.0162. Now we state our conclusion. So if p is less than alpha, we're going to reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative hypothesis. Otherwise, we'll fail to reject the null hypothesis. So let's do it. So since p is 0.0162 is less than 0.05, which is our alpha that we chose earlier, we'll reject the null hypothesis at the alpha is 0.05 significance level and say that there's strong statistical evidence to suggest that super SAT prep actually helps students perform better on the SAT. Notice if we had chosen alpha to be 0.01 instead of 0.05 earlier, we would have a different conclusion. It would be something like, since p is 0.0162, which is greater than alpha, we failed to reject the null hypothesis at the 0.01 significance level, and there's insufficient evidence to prove that super SAT actually helps students perform better. And note that we'll never say we'll accept the null hypothesis. If you recall the coin flip example, if we observe 55 heads instead of 99, that wouldn't have been improbable. Uh, we wouldn't have called the magician a liar. But it did not imply that p was actually equal to 0.5. It could have been 0.54 or 0.58, for example. So that's the formal hypothesis testing procedure summarized here.